In this video, we're going to build the skeleton for our MERN application for our Diablo 2 tracker. So uh, first, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our Git repository. After that, we're going to set up Node on our machine, make sure that's installed, and then we'll install Express, and we'll get Mongo set up, and then we'll actually install a React app, just a boilerplate one, nothing fancy yet. Um, so yeah, let's jump in and get going and at least set up our uh, repository. So I'm using GitHub. And uh, in here, all we're going to do is create a new repository. And we're going to call this Diablo 2 Tracker. And I'm going to make this a public repo. We're going to add a readme just for the simplistic uh, way that it builds out a repository for you. And there we go. We have a blank app. We're going to clone this down into our machine. So I'm just going to do the HTTPS. And let's clone this down. There we go. We do git clone. Okay. All right. And we're going to CD into that repository so we can start looking at what's in there. All right, I'm just that readme. So what we're going to do now is um, you'll need to have Node installed. So just to uh, go over it, I'm not going to install it because I already have it installed. Um, but here in this... Uh, the site here, nodejs.org. Um, I'm using uh, Node 14, the LTS version, so I'd recommend downloading at least that version. Um, one reason you'll want that version is because I'm going to enable ES module syntax in Node, and that's only available in version 14, so I'd recommend that if you're going to follow along. Um, but yeah, so that's what you'll need to download and install. Uh, feel free to pause the video and, and do what you need to get that installed. Um, then after that, what we're going to do is in our repository, we are going to install a couple different packages and these will allow us to run an API, which will be powering our application. Using VS code, I like to open the folder so that I can see all the files that I'm working on. Um, so I'm just going to go and open up that tracker. And there we go. Now we have the ability to view all those files, like I mentioned. So um, the next thing we want to do is set this uh, application up as a node application. So one way to do that is to just say npm init. And this goes through and kind of asks a couple questions about uh, the application that you're building to set it up. So um, we're going to call the package name by its default, Diablo 2 Tracker, just by hitting enter. Version 1, that's fine by me. Description, um, a simple tracker app for Diablo 2. And entry point is index.js, that's fine. Test command, don't have one right now. Git repository, that's great. Keywords, author, and go like that. And then it asks you if it's okay. Um, I'm just gonna say yes, so that's fine. Okay, so now um, we have um, an app that's set up with a package JSON file. That's really what that um, npm init command did was created this um, package JSON file for us so that we can track our dependencies and different things that go into a node application. So yeah, this all looks great. And the next thing we got to do is start installing some of the NPM packages that we want to use. Um, so at this point, we have created an N application, just the node. That's it. <laughs> so let's create some more pieces to it, right? Um, so let's install um, Express. So this is what's going to run our API. Install that here. Perfect. Okay, and 
Now we want to also install, um, whoops. And so you can do an NPM I as well. Um, so there's a package called .env. And what that package is for is it just, it's a simple command to run um, that loads an environment variable uh, file into your node application. So when we get there, I'll show you what it is. Um, then another one we want to install is uh, mongoose. And what this is going to be for later on down the road is when we connect up the Mongo uh, database and we can basically write uh, models that will help um, manage the structure of different objects in our application. So um, that'll connect with the database, communicate with it, as well as um, set the shape of all those different things like users or character classes and stuff like that. So that's that. And then we also want to install um, something called bcrypt JS. And this will help us with uh, simple user authentication where we can encrypt and decrypt um, a password. And after that, we also want to install JSON web token. And um, that will help us with authorization. Pim. Hi, not npm. There we go. Okay. Great. There are a couple packages I want to install that are more like helpers as a developer. Um, you'll want them or enjoy them, I would think. Um, so, so far, if you look up at this package JSON, you can see all that we've installed uh, listed under dependencies. Um, now, the ones we're going to install next are considered as dev dependencies because you don't need it in your production application, um, but it's really helpful to have it while you're um, developing on your local machine. So um, the two that I want to install are called Nodemon and Concurrently. So you can list them out like that and it'll install them both. Um, but what we want to do is save them as dev dependencies and you do that by adding that dash dash save dev um, flag. So um, let's do that now. All right, now that that's done, um, you'll be able to see those two dependencies listed under dev dependencies, which means when you build your production app, you will be able to um, not include these in your bundle um, just to minimize your package. And this is really only meant for when you're developing. So it's kind of nice that you can split them out that way. Um, so another thing uh, that I didn't show as I recorded it um, is that as you add a bunch of these dependencies, um, when you install them, uh, they will all go into the node modules folder and it can get quite large with a lot of files. So one thing you're going to want to do is to create a .gitignore file. And what this will do is makes it so Git doesn't try to track all the different files and changes in that uh, folder. So make sure you add a gitignore to the root of your application and add node modules in there um, so that these are not tracked um, in your application. It'll just help out your, your repository. I'd like to do one more piece of setup and then we're gonna switch gears a little bit and actually go configure uh, Mongo for our app. So um, one thing I found useful uh, with Node and uh, working in a React app at the same time is you can actually have the same uh, module import syntax um, to use ES modules. Um, so to do that in Node, um, all you have to do is add a type module uh, property in your package JSON. Um, when we get to the point where we import, um, I can show you more about what this is, or yeah, I'll just show you right now. So if you have a, a JavaScript file and you want to import uh, package. Um, sometimes you'll see a require um, and then some path, you know, to a, to a module that you want to use. 
um, the ES module syntax, you use import, and then you can use you know the default name, or you can um, extract the other things that are exported out of that file. So one export here, another export here, um, and you do the from uh, in the path of the file here. So a little bit different syntax, uh, but this is what I like to use with React, and this is common JS with Node. Um, so what this little uh, type module does is it allows you to use the same syntax on Node as you do in React. And it's just kind of useful so that when you're jumping back and forth, you can use the same um, syntax. So it'll make more sense once we get there. But that's all this little last little NPM configuration was. So now um, the next thing we're going to do is we'll jump over to setting up our MongoDB account and um, setting up that database. All right. <clears throat> okay, so what we want to do now is set up our database so that we have some data to pull into um, our Node application that we can serve through the API. So, so far we haven't set anything up in Node. There's no application. It's literally just a, a boilerplate of an NPM in it. Um, so let's get into the database, set it up, and then we'll use uh, the Express API to serve this data. So. Um, again, let's jump in here, and um, if you've never been here before, um, just go to mongodb.com, and uh, it's a free account that you can create, as well as you can create a free uh, database um, on here, and there's a free tier, so you don't have to worry about it costing you anything as long as you choose the right um, options here. Um, so yeah, it'll... Look a little different for you since I've already created my account, but you'll create an organization and a project. Um, so just do it and follow the prompts. They're very simple. Um, leave some comments if you need some, some help there. But once you're in there and set up, what you'll see is um, something along these lines where you can create a database, um, which I'm going to do here. So uh, yeah, so here we go. So you have the choice of a dedicated database, a serverless database, or a free uh, database. So I'm going to choose the free option. You don't even have to enter a credit card, which is the best part about it. So you can just play around and get to know it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to choose the free AWS and uh, Oregon is my region. And um, you can name the cluster if you want to. I'm just going to leave it as cluster zero. That's fine by me. And I'm just going to hit create. Now this does take a couple minutes, so I'll probably end up clipping the video out, but um, just know that that's totally normal. It actually says right here that it takes between one to three minutes. So uh, we'll just see you when we get back. Once your database is completely provisioned, you'll be able to uh, set up the connection to your node API. So to do that, all you need to do is click on that connect button um, right here. And it'll run through this small little setup of the IP address you can access it from. Um, you can just say access from anywhere or your own IP address if you want to keep it really secure. And then you have to create at least one database user in order to set up that connection. So I'm just going to name mine admin, give it a really simple password. There we go. And then that one as well. And then I'm going to choose my connection method, and this will give you a few options. Um, so it just depends on what you're connecting to um, or what you're connecting from. So we're going to be connecting from Node, so we can use this connect your application option and just choose Node version 4 or later. And um, there is this checkbox here where you can get the full connection string example. Um, I'm just going to use this little piece here um, to set up the, uh, the connection string in our application. So I'm going to go over to uh, VS Code. 
And what I'm going to do is in the root of the project, I'm going to create um, a .env file. And I'm going to give it a uh, value here of mongodb uri equals this. Now, a uh, .env file is one way to basically store configurations for your application. And these are typically going to contain uh, secrets that you don't want outside users uh, to really know. So you don't want to track this in your Git repository. So to ignore the .env file, you're just going to add another line in our Git ignore so that it doesn't track this in Git, um, but you can configure these files to hold uh, the secrets that make the connections to your database. Later, when you're wanting to deploy this to Heroku, you'll set up these same values um, in Heroku. So these, these values don't transfer in the repository itself, but you'll need to set them up wherever you do deploy it. So um, whatever you set your password to, just replace password with that. Mine was just really simple and connecting to cluster zero and my first database. Um, we're gonna connect or create one called test in just a moment. So you can replace that with test if you would like, um, or let's just call it tracker. We'll, we'll use a tracker database there. Okay, so something like that. Um, now we're gonna go back over to Mongo and create that tracker database and give it a test collection so that we can use that in our application. All right, so here we've got what we needed from that connection. And let's go to Browse Collections. I already have one called Test here, but I can actually remove that, so let me do that. Or we can just create. All right, let's just create a database called Tracker. And we'll make a collection named test. Sorry, doing a little bit of cleanup here at the same time. <laughs> okay, so you should have a Tracker database and then a test collection and you can insert a document into here by clicking uh, insert document over here and i'm just going to give this a uh, message with hello world there cool all right so now um, you should be able to um, connect to your database from your node API, and we will get this message back once we get that all connected. So that's all it took to, to set up a database. And this is available if you want to make it, uh, you know, connectable from anywhere. That's what that IP address from anywhere was, or you can just keep it local to yourself. It just depends on how you set up your database access and your network access things earlier. So now we can go over into VS code and actually start building a little bit of an API. So let's create a folder here and I'm going to call it server. And I'm going to create another file inside of here called index.js. And this file will be where the server actually um, starts and runs. So what we want to do now is import express from express. And this will allow us to use express now. So we can do const app equals express, something like that. Right. Uh, 
Now just to back up a teeny bit here, um, what we're wanting to do um, when we call express here is we're creating an instance of our server, right? So we're creating the instance of the server. And then what we're doing down here is we're creating the routes that the server will have. Um, so that's like when you go into the browser and say, um, you know, you want to get the API test route, um, what it's actually going to return. That's what we're setting up here. So when you're setting up routes like this, um, what you give first is the path of the route that you're setting up. So in our case, we'll do API test. And then the second parameter for a get request is you have a function that takes a request and a response um, as part of the, the function here. And um, to return something, all you have to do is say res um, and you can do dot send. And you can just say something simple like hello world from test route. And uh, if you were to hit the API, which I'll show you how to do that in just a moment, um, at the route API test, you'll get the string hello world from test route back. Um, so down here, uh, we'll set that up. So um, I'm gonna say set the uh, server to listen on a port. So what we want to do is we're going to set our app. So app, we're going to tell it to listen. And you can give it, there are multiple different um, forms of this, um, but you can give it a port. So we'll give it a port of 5,000. And then uh, we can also in here um, just call um, a function that it will do when it uh, starts listening. So you can just say started listening. So now when you run index.js, it's gonna create an instance of the server, set up a route for API test, and then start listening on port 5000. And um, then you can start hitting the API. So let's just give that a shot right now, actually. Um, so let's go one more layer into the server and we're going to say node index.js. You can see in the console there it said started listening. Now if we go to our browser here, you can type in the URL and go to localhost 5000 and uh, API test, which is the route we set up. And you can see that we actually get that response that we had sent from our uh, Node Express server. Um, so yeah, that's the basics of how you set up a route in Express and how you can see it in your browser. Uh, so now um, what we're going to do is go set up uh, the database connection to get that uh, test data from the database so that you can see the whole uh, app from start to finish of Mongo, Express, Node, um, all interacting together. So there are two things we need to do in order to connect to the database. Uh, from our node server. So first one being we need to actually bring in that dot env um, That we had set up earlier. We have the database connection. So we need to import dot env from dot env Pretty simple there and what we want to do is read in the dot env configurations so how we do that is we just say dot env dot config so very simple very very short but what that will do is it will pull in these values into uh, the node process so back in index 
what this is going to do is it'll pull that value so that you can add or access it in here. So we'll be able to say process.env mongodb uri. Um, and just to show you that, I can just do a console log really quick. And let's stop this. So just a control C. Let's start it again. All right. So that actually didn't work. The reason that didn't work is actually pretty simple, and I, it's kind of funny that I overlooked it. Um, when you start your server, you need to be starting it from the root. And we've been, at least so far, I've been starting it from one level inside of server. So what we need to do is set up a uh, NPM script to start the server from the root. So um, how to do that is open up your package JSON and go to your scripts section. And you can add a new script here. I'm just gonna call it server. And what we want it to do is start node and it's gonna start server index.js. Um, now, instead of running um, the server from inside of here, now what we're gonna do is say npm run server and it'll run the same thing and now you can actually see that the uh, the connection is being uh, loaded incorrectly so small little thing there um, but yeah you have to make sure you're running it from the root because our env file is in the root because this last time I wasn't able to find it <laughs> so that's why Now that we know we're actually reading in that connection string, let's go ahead and actually create a database connection file um, so that we can keep this index.js a little bit more clean um, while we deal with things. So over in your server folder, create a new file, and I'm going to call it uh, database.js. And we are going to import a mongoose here from mongoose and I'm going to create a function and just call it a connect so async function connect and what we want to do in here is uh, connect to the database so using mongoose um, what you got to do is you just have to call uh, mongoose connect and then this is where we bring in our connection string mongodb uri and then um, there are some recommended options that i pulled from the mongoose website uh, and i've seen other examples in you know some blog posts and things that use these here um, so i'm going to use those as well um, but yeah so that function itself will connect um, to the Mongo database. And uh, yeah, that's that's mostly what you need. But just to make sure that we're being thorough, um, let's wrap this in a, uh, a try catch just to make sure if something goes wrong, we can actually, um, you know, handle it. So let's just move that up here. This needs to go up one more. There we go. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to say console dot error. Put the error there. And then we can do a process dot exit the status of one. Um, just because at that point we know that the uh, connection failed. So we might as well just uh, crash the program, which is fine. Um, and then to export this, we can say export default, 
um, so that when you export the database or when you try to pull this in, you can just use it as the default. So back in index.js, let's import our new file. Import connect from database.js. And now we can say connect. And at this point, uh, Mongoose will maintain that connection for us um, and we'll be connected to the database. Um, the other thing that we do need to do is create a model file for that um, piece of data that we made a, a test database for. So let's go here and create a new models folder. And we're going to call this test model.js and let's import oops from mongoose there we go so mongoose has a, a schema um, that you can use to define the structure um, of your data so unlike uh, mysql if you're familiar with it you basically define the structure in the database itself MongoDB is uh, not structured in the same way. So we're letting our application decide on the structure. Um, so that's why we're writing it here in our API and not setting up those kinds of things on the database side. So, um, but yeah, so we're going to create a schema first. And I'm going to go check really quick to see what that structure was in our uh, Mongo browse collections. So we gave a collection and it has an ID and just a message with hello world. So we're going to make a message property um, in our code. So we're going to do message as a type string. And then we want to export default. Let's go like this actually. Const test model equals mongoose dot model and pass in the test schema. So you build a schema and then you pass the schema to the model function and it creates an actual instance um, of, of the model there. And then to use it, you have to export it as well. And then uh, here you also need to tell it which um, collection it goes to. Let me make sure that I am actually calling these in the correct order. So when you're creating the model here, what you actually are wanting to do is first uh, naming the model. So we're just going to call it test model. Maybe we'll just do test. And then you pass the schema. Could use my autocomplete there to help me out to know which way to send it. And then, uh, you can give it what collection it would um, be querying in the database. So our collection was called uh, test. So we did tracker as the database, test as the collection, and here we're setting up um, everything we wanted. So let's uh, actually just create these a little bit differently. Okay, so we're creating a model. Uh, now to make the query, all we need to do is go back over to index.js and um, import that new model. So let's do an import test, let's call it test model from models, test model.js. Then down here, um, what we can do 
I just thought of something too. Over in um, our database connection, this is supposed to be uh, something we need to await. It's a promise. So um, we want to make sure that actually connects before we move forward. Okay. Now, <laughs> back over here, um, what we can do is we can use the uh, the model to make a query to the database. So, um, and this will be uh, asynchronous. So we'll do an async uh, anonymous function here and we'll call test model dot find. And um, with this, um, as it is right here, it will actually find um, all the documents that are inside of the uh, the test collection. So let's just get uh, results here. Equals away test model dot find, and we can send um, JSON back, and we'll just send the results. So now. Um, if we call API test, um, we should be getting all the results from what's currently in the test collection. Um, so let's start up our server here. Okay, what do we have here? Use create index is not supported. So this is in the Mongo client. Okay, I will have to go look this one up really quick. Okay, so you remember those options I told you about that I put in there because most people said to put them in. The use create index option, um, which is right here, is no longer supported in the current version of Mongo. So <laughs> now that uh, that option is no longer valid, and that's what was breaking my server from running. So um, we can remove that out. And uh, now when you do npm run server, you should get the started listening as below. And now what we can do, I already tested it a moment ago, but um, you can run localhost 5000 API test and you will get in an array of JSON of all the objects you put into the database. So if you insert more documents into the database and then come test this, you'll see uh, more of them there, not just the one. I wanted to do a really quick wrap up of this video I didn't realize how long it was going to be. Um, I'm just getting going with recording, so I apologize if some of it felt a little choppy or, or weird, but uh, um, recap of what we did. So we created um, a Mongo account, which we created a test database and a, a test collection to work with. We connected this database to a node server um, that's running an Express API server on it. Um, and we were able to pull in that information using that MongoDB connection. And uh, we were able to see that information come in the browser. Um, so there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of video just to do that. Um, but I hope it was at least a little bit helpful for you. Um, let me know if you have any comments or questions about this video. I really appreciate the feedback um, as I'm learning how to do all these videos and I get nervous recording it. So I, I really appreciate uh, the, the constructive criticism as how to do this better and how to make it more helpful for you. So anyways, I really hope you did enjoy the video. Uh, let me know again and, and hope you guys have a good one. We'll see ya.